evening, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and I've uh, had a very eventful week this week. Uh, had to go get some testing for a uh, gallbladder issue there. Uh, you know, and if that wasn't enough, I uh, got into a hornet's nest, and, well, I found out that my legs can still run real fast, but my body just doesn't quite know how to keep up with it. Well, I had a nice good crash of a fall, uh, so my ribs are hurting pretty bad after that fall. Uh, and if that didn't make matters worse, here's my old 1940 uh, potbelly track Ford potbelly tractor here. I say Ford. I don't think it's a Ford. I forget exactly what they call this particular type of tractor. But uh, I, I bought it from a dear friend. Uh, he was uh, he's a Native American. He's actually the spiritual chief of the tribe and a believer in Jesus. I uh, bought it from him about three years ago. Runs beautiful. Uh, but I forgot that the brakes didn't work. And I'm moving it to park it in behind another spot there my wife wanted me to put it at. And it got away from me. Uh, and I couldn't get the brakes to stop it. I'm going down the side of the mountain. And I probably went about 100 yards. So I guess I'm doing about 25, 30 miles an hour. I mean, it was moving. Moving much faster than I felt safe enough to try to jump off of it. And... Uh, and I hit a bunch of small trees, hoping it would slow it down. It didn't slow that thing down, not one bit, till I hit that tree there that did not want to give up. And uh, so now both legs have uh, been banged up pretty good. Uh, nothing more than to hurt my feelings. And, of course, the tree you seen leaning over, a small, not a big tree there, but it was kind of dead, it broke in half, still pretty solid, whacked me on the back of the head, so the back of my neck hurts. My right leg hurts. My left leg is hurt as well, but uh, I can't really feel that one a whole lot, so it doesn't really hurt too bad, uh, except for the deeper pain, because I can feel deeper nerves, but just not surface nerves. Uh, so, But I think the tractor is going to survive. <laughs> survive. <laughs> Believe it or not, I think the tractor is going to survive. But you want to talk about, I must really have the devil on edge on the things I'm going to share with you, uh, because I have to tell you something. I got some big trees on my property and I was definitely trying to avoid hitting those big trees because I was afraid if I hit one of those, because you already know this, that what happens is when, the, when whatever you hit, when that, that vehicle stops, your body's still traveling at that speed. And uh, so, yeah, I was still traveling and I went forward and that's why I got my legs all banged up because they got kind of wedged up into the tractor, but my head went forward, and of course I went down and the tree broke off and came and whacked me in the back of the head. So anyway, it's a pretty interesting moment there. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, what I want to talk to you about, uh, and oh, by the way, before I get into this, in doing some research in the ancient documents there, I ran across one document, very, very troubling. It does talk about that in this last days that they're going to bring out a new set of laws. And I realized it was evidently talking about the Noahide laws that they're going to bring out. But what even was worse is said that they were going to poison the, the atmosphere. Uh, and that reminded me of what I shared not too long ago um, with, uh, oh gosh, I forget exactly where that was at. I'd, I'd shared with uh, you guys uh, from some inside information that I'd got from a good friend of mine that they were going to release anthrax into the atmosphere uh, as a false flag event and is going to be released over, over major cities. Well, that's actually written in a 2,000-year-old Egyptian document. And um, I, I couldn't believe it. It also talked about how that the archons would take, when we talk about archons, archons are just fallen angels. All right, that's all they are, fallen angels. Uh, that is written in our own Bible. Uh, Paul talks about them. The only difference is, is you don't have the word archon written in English, but in the Greek, it's archons. That's exactly what he calls them. Uh, and uh, when he says we wrestle, wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, the principalities are archaea, which is archons. Uh, so that's what we are fighting against. And in some of the other documents you know, uh, I've come across, it talks about that they war against the inner man of you. They, they go against your soul. Um, a lot of different things out there. You know, like I said, these things are not biblical, but 
they are interesting to to look at for historical documentation, especially, I mean, how would we know that they were going to poison the atmosphere? How would they know that 2,000 years ago they're going to do that, right? Anyway, this here, we're on, this is patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. I did this video two days ago, Fallen Angels Are Coming Back, and uh, Pastor Anthony has permission to post uh, Mike from Around the World's uh, content, and this is where he's on with uh, Paul Begley, and I, I did I did a video about something that Mike says on here because he's talking about entities that are going to come. Paul's doing everything he can to try to figure out what kind of entities these are. Uh, he's asking him everything you can imagine. And of course, Mike never answers him as far as the type. Um, he's just going into details of what's coming. And he's very accurate. Uh, I also play in here, and I'm going to play a clip from my own video as well. Eight months prior to this, I told you about this, but I realized I'd never made it public. I thought I had, but I guess I had not. Uh, so on my channel, Stephen Benoon, uh, uh YouTube channel there, I did release that video publicly, uh, yes, or two days ago. So you can actually see that original video now. This one here, though, is still only on uh, Patreon. And... Um, but I'm going to play two clips for you, one where Mike talks about it and then one where I talk about it eight months earlier about the same subject that Mike is telling uh, uh, Paul's listeners there. Now, then I want to get into um, the biblical aspects of the falling away, because this is really what it is. This is what I wish Mike would recognize, because Mike recognizes that these demons that are coming are fallen angels, that these are really very demonic entities, they're going to look human. And he does make that pretty clear. They're going to look human. Now, not all the ones that have come, that have that have interacted with people with inside the intelligence community have looked human, but the ones that they will send, they're going to have them look human for you anyway, so that it'll be more convincing to you that they are your brothers, so to speak. That's the danger. That's the real danger. I'm going to also share with you, as you saw a moment ago, Ariel Tzedek. Ariel Tzedek is a Jewish rabbi. He has a kosher Torah school. Uh, uh, Ariel Bar Tzedek is his name. And he also talks about these entities. You've seen him on the History Channel, no doubt, if you watch the History Channel. He's been on multiple different platforms there. And I agree with him on a lot of aspects about these entities, that they've existed, where they exist, things like that. But what we don't see eye to eye on is, are they good or are they bad? And I know they're evil and demonic, and he thinks they're good and great. That's where we differ at. Uh, I wish he would see uh, my point of view on this, and I have no idea if he's ever heard anything I've done, but uh, I do play some of the things that he speaks about here because they're very concerning to me. But then again, a lot of the rabbis are from the dynasty of the Pharisees, and we're going to get into that. We're going to get into what Jesus says about this because you need to be warned about it. That's what concerns me when I think of Mike, uh, Paul Bagley, or the rest of these guys, and they support Israel, and they're not warning you of the relationship that pastors are having with Pharisees. You know, I love the Jewish people, and I want them to recognize that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That's what our goal should be. But when you're saying that you're going to learn from these rabbis, then you need to listen to what the words of Jesus has to say. All right, let's don't waste any time. Let's get into this. Here we go. We're going to play what Mike says here first. Let's listen in. They say, I, say. I believe the biblical narrative. Amen. I know that these things are liars, but they won't. They just don't seem like that to everybody else, and they're not going to appear the way people think they are. No, it will be shock and awe, right? It'll be shock and awe. And they will seem like that they're, you know, man's brothers or whatever the case is. Okay. Man's brothers. Listen. Are we talking right? about the angels of light? <clears throat> Paul's trying his best to get the answer out of uh, Mike, uh, but let me kind of share with you some of the information I shared eight months ago. Those uh, extraterrestrial beings is going to claim that he is Ra, that the, he is the Egyptian God Ra. Uh, and you want to talk about some confusion that's going to be coming. 
Uh, he's, you know, also the, the, the creation story that they have is that they're going to speak about how that the humans were created as bioweapon slaves. And, uh, and then e- even worse is that Ra has a different story when it comes to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Watch this. And that different story has a lot to do with the Jewish people weren't so responsible for his death in the first place. It's basically going to be an inclusive uh, faith, an inclusive religion. And they have been working on this for a long time. They're making sure they exonerate Uh, the Jews. They're they're working on trying to figure out how to hurdle over the issue with the cross. Uh, And the entities have, have, as I've been told, they they have thought this all out. And uh, but one of the things that was shared with me in, in, in this information the other day was that talk about the scripture where it says, uh, you know, people being confused, you know, and, and that's actually going to the scripture where it talks about uh, how that, you know, the, 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 <clears throat> the very elect could be deceived. And, and what he's implying is that the story can be so believable the way they're going to lay this out, so believable yeah. that if it wasn't for the Heavenly Father, uh, people would be deceived. And we're going to go much deeper into this. I have a meeting coming up um, very soon. And- I'm going to pause it for now, but you get the gist of it, of what I was trying to share there. Uh, before I go into Errol Sadok and some of the things that he says here, let me just see here. Um, I want to bring you. We're in the book of Mark. Um, Jesus speaking here, except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake whom he hath chosen, he has shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. Now you got to understand what that is. That's really an application for our day. They're going to try to tell you that Jesus didn't resurrect, that he's buried somewhere out here in the desert. They found his body here, or they found it over there. He's telling you, don't believe it. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall signs and wonders to seduce even if it were possible, even the elect. So what they're trying to prove to you is very believable. They're going to bring up some kind of archaeological finds or something to prove something to you. Israel's doing a lot of excavations. But take ye, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light. The stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in the heaven shall be shaken. By the way, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it to you. I know I was pre-recording this earlier, and I started over again, so I don't know if I said this or not. Uh, In one of the Egyptian documents that I just recently was looking at, a couple of things that were mentioned in there was the fact that they wouldn't be able to travel the seas no more because the stars will be out of whack. That's one of the reasons right there what Jesus prophesied about. It also says in there that the that the atmosphere, the, uh, the sky above you would be poisoned. Remember when I shared with you not too long ago that they were going to use anthrax as a false flag and do an air be an air assault on major cities? Think about it, right? Same document, it talks about that the archons, and don't be afraid of the word archons, because Paul says it, says it right there when he says, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, blood, but against principalities. The word principalities is archaea, the archons. So with the archons, they also are the ones that brought in the atheistic belief to confuse the world in this day that you're living in. Um, they would bring in laws, new laws. I believe it's talking about the seven Noahide laws. All these things that were written in there are written about the day you're living in now. So I just wanted to kind of share that with you there. Um, 
Let me see if there was any other reason why. I think that was the only reason I wanted to bring that out right there. Uh, also, 2 Thessalonians. This is really the important part. Then we're going to jump back over here to Ariel Sadok in the video he has here. But that the day of Christ is at hand. You be not soon shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor word nor by letter as from us. As that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Now this next part right here is not. This is not in the original text. But it's implied. So I guess we can accept it. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now Jesus actually called Judas the son of perdition. But this was written after Ju uh, Judas. So obviously another son of perdition is coming. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's one of the reasons why we believe there will be a third temple. Now I have argued before that it may be technology that you being the temple of God, that with them wanting to put technology inside of us there to where they can to control what you think, know what you think, do, etc., that that could be exactly what it's speaking about there, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Because remember, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, came back, poured out the Holy Spirit upon the believer, the believer became endowed with his spirit, that is, God living in you, quickening you, making you one with Christ. So Satan, in order for him to pull off being in the temple of God, as we are likened as the temple, then he may actually be referring to getting into the body of human beings to be in that temple. It's just a thought. Don't know the answer. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that with, with no, what withholds that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. You know, it's one of the reasons why he would, you know, Jesus will return in this day when all these archons, all these fallen angels, these demons and demonic beings have come here to this earth for a final showdown. So, no, I don't believe, I mean, I'm not saying the blue beam technology couldn't be used and to enhance the way it looks. No, these demons are really coming. There really is going to be a showdown. Yes, the dimensions will crash down upon one another. When we say crash down upon one another, in other words, they'll begin to come and break down one right after another to where we see them, they see us, and we're all here together in one place. Because Jesus is coming at that time where he can destroy Satan and his kingdom in the final showdown. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. So that son of perdition is coming now is after the working of Satan, and he's going to have signs and wonders. That's going to happen before Christ's return. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. The only ones that would not receive the love of the truth were the Pharisees, Sadducees of Jesus' day. The scribes. And here we are in this day, 2,000 years later, and they're still holding fast not to believe a word that Jesus has to say. But thank God there are some Jews that come out and recognize Christ to be the Messiah. My cousin, an Orthodox Man in black, fully orthodox, Hasidic Jew, recognized Jesus Christ to be his Savior and came out. Now, he still runs around wearing the black uh, Hasidic uh, uh, gear, and I don't blame him. So, you know, I don't, have that, I don't hold that against him. I thank God he came out. David's his name. 
lives over in Europe. Right now, I think he's out in Arizona. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Now, who's he going to send the strong delusion to? To the descendant of the Pharisees. The Pharisees of today, he's giving them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. How do you know that, Steve? Because he says right here, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You're living in the day where the Pharisees of today that will not receive the love of the truth of Jesus Christ are going to be given strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Now the sad thing is, is the evangelical ministers that fall right into the trap with them. That they all might be damned to believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. Wow. I tell you what, brother, you you that are sitting there thinking that you have to learn from Pharisees of today, you are in serious trouble if you don't wake up and wake up very soon. Let me show you what some of these guys believe. All right. I mean, this here is Ariel Sadok, and I'm going to play for you a little bit of what he has to say. Listen in. Let's shift that. We're not here to talk religion. I'm not here to talk to you about religion at all. Those entities whom we call representatives, Malachim, like the ones who came in Genesis chapter 6, who took the daughters of men and gave rise to the Nephilim, the fallen ones. They were not giants. The word giant is not there in Genesis. So don't go looking for that for, for the evidence of a six foot, about a ten foot tall guys. Ten foot tall guys were here long ago. All right? Some might still be around. Ask some of the soldiers who fought in Afghanistan. Well, maybe that was just a lie. Hmm. Yeah. Moving right along. Who were these people? Even Rabbi Aaron Soloveitchik, Alava Shalom, the Rosh Hashiva, Brisk, he wrote, and he knew, they were what our traditions call the Ishim. They were representatives. We call them Malachim. But what they were were the pre-Adamic humans who went to another planet. Planet. Listen to this. And lived there, maybe in a different dimension of that planet that we would be experiencing. So I will tell you this, you can accept this or not. Every planet in our solar system, Mars, Venus, Mercury, even the moon, they're all fully, fully inhabited with ancient civilizations that are technologically advanced with millions and millions of inhabitants. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back it up. Yeah. you got to listen Move close. Right along. Who were these people? Even Rabbi Aaron Soloveitchik, Alava Shalom. He says, who are these people? And he's talking about the children of the Nephilim, or the Nephilim, the fallen ones. Nephilim are the children. Nephilim are what they call the fallen ones. Now, he uses the term the way the rabbis do the, do the vowel points, which is incorrect. And he says they weren't giants. I differ with him on that issue there because, according to Enoch, they were. Nonetheless, let's argue that maybe he's right to some degree. But he's talking about they're human-like and they're living in a parallel universe. We know from CERN that we have seven other dimensions, and then first three dimensions, and I've shared this with uh, my viewers on Patreon, those first three dimensions, there are Earth-like civilizations parallel to this one. Now, you can take that or leave that. I'm just sharing with you things that I've heard from the Intel community. But he's talking about these being human-like beings that went to another planet in another dimension. Now, I'm going to back up and play for you what Mike says from around the world in just a moment, but listen closely. He wrote, and he knew, they were what our traditions call the Ishim. They were representatives. We call them Malachim. But what they were were the pre-Adamic humans who went 
to another planet, planet, and live there, maybe in a different dimension of that planet that we would be experiencing. All right, now you've got that. Let me take you back over here to what Mike had to say here. Let me find that spot there. Listen in. That doesn't mean you believe everything they say. I see. I believe the biblical narrative. Right, amen. I know that these things are liars, but they won't, they just don't seem like that to everybody else, and they're not going to appear the way people think they are. No, it will be shock and awe, right? It'll be shock and awe. And they will seem like that they're, you know, man's brothers or whatever the case is. Okay. Man man's brothers. brothers. Let's, are we talking right? about the angels of light? Paul's trying his best to get the answer out of uh, Mike, uh, but let me kind of share with you some of the information I shared eight months ago. You know, Those uh, extraterrestrial beings is going to... Is part this past Paul, they have to get ready because uh, they've been given a timeline to Okay. And people 20, are about to see a very real way, picture of what's going to happen. But I'll, I'll say it again. The Bible is the blueprint. Is your best informative um, I appreciate source this right now, the best true here. source. Really and if do. anybody else goes to another source, they're highly deceived and will be deceived, right? And when you see things in front, if, if, if somebody saw something in front of their faces interacting with them, that doesn't mean you believe everything they say. The point that I was wanting you to see is that Mike does refer to them like like a human type of being, or or I think I think he says that they they'll say that. Let me just play it. I believe the biblical narrative. Amen. I know that these things are liars, but they won't. They just won't seem like that to everybody else, and they're not going to appear liars. the way people think they are. No, it will be shocking all. Right? It'll be shocking all, and they will seem like that they're you know man's brothers or whatever the case there, there you go they'll seem like they are man's brothers and notice how ariel sadok pointed it out as well pre-adamic pre-adamic humans that's what's coming and because of the collapse of dimension you're going to be able to see that's why mike says you'll see that right before your face it'll be shock and awe the collapsing of the dimensions was, is what causes the shock and awe. The CERN is what causes the shock and awe. Let's come back now. Let's go back. The Thessalonians. Who's involved in this, no, though? They receive not the love of the truth. It's the Pharisees. This is the, part, it's the only part that gets me with about Paul, with about Mike. And listen, I know you guys are upset with Paul. And, and, and believe me, I am as well. Because Paul has been a good friend of mine for many, many years. Um. The kindness he's shown me, my family, uh, Heidi as well. You know, I have a love for this man because he I know he's got a good heart. So it matters to me when I see him going off the way he's gone off. All right? Uh, listen, I... And I know that some of the, you guys have got different issues than what I have. I focus, I'm focused on that heart, that soul that's there that I care about. And with Mike, when I listen to Mike, I see Mike so accurate on so many things. An amazing guy. But in both cases, I still see that connection to Zionism that they don't recognize as dangerous. And so... God opens my heart to be able to see things that a lot of people don't see. And I can't help it. It just happens to me. And so I try to share these things. And, and I told you guys a little while back, I feel so strong about really starting to teach more than I have in many, many years. Those of you that have been here with me for the last, I don't know how long I've been doing this, what, 10 years or so, maybe more, uh, maybe less. I forget the time frame now. You know that all these messages here, you know, Israeli News Live was, I don't even think we call it Israeli News Live originally, still the same channel, but I just changed the name of it over time. This was nothing but a teaching channel in the very beginning. I remember when people first started sending uh, donations to our ministry, I was sending them back. 
<laughs> That's the honest to God's truth. Any of you guys from the early days that first donated, I'd send it back. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I, I don't want this. See, at the time, I still owned my own company and I made good money. And so I didn't, I, I, I had no need of anything. And people would get irritated with me. They'd be like, no, you can't do that. This is the way God deals with our heart. We want you to have this, you know. And, you know, finally, though, I got to that place where I made that decision that I would sell my company, and I did, and I would go full-time in the ministry. And, of course, we went to Israel. We lived in Israel for a short period of time. I'd lived in Israel before back in 2004. Many of you know that story. Um, I was actually in Israel from 2004 to 2006. Now, not full-time. Full-time, I was there in 2004. Uh, then I came home. Then I went back again in 05 and 06. Was there quite quite frequently at that point. But nonetheless, uh, slowly but surely, I evolved into news. Uh, I got more and more into news. And so many of you that are watching now that like the news aspects of this, you're like, oh, I don't want to hear this. You know, just bear with me. And, and maybe it'll bless your heart as well. I hope it does. Anyway, though. This is the part I was trying to get you to understand, though. His coming is after the working of Satan. That's the son of perdition. With all powers and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Now notice, that's really important. The, the, the son of perdition, his working is after Satan. He's got signs and wonders, lying wonders, it makes it clear. With all deceivableness... So he's there to deceive you in unrighteousness. There ain't nothing righteous about him. In them that perish. That's very important. In them that perish. So he's working with this one group. And it tells you what that group is. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So his deceivableness and unrighteousness is, is, is in them. In other words, he's a part of the very ones that would not receive the love of the truth. And the ones that wouldn't receive the love of the truth were the Pharisees, Sag Pharisees scribes, and Sadducees. Well, Sadducees were kind of like half and half. But the scribes and Pharisees all together, they, except for a few, Paul was a Pharisee, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and I believe both of them came around. Well, we know Paul did. Well, there's a lot of people that don't like Paul. And the reason they don't like Paul is because Paul really goes in there and bashes up the law. And you've got to wake up to that, friends. I'm telling you, you cannot serve two masters. You're either going to love one and hate the other or hate the other and love the one. And you may not realize that's talking about the law, but I'm telling you, and the Egyptian documents that are out there about Christianity, and those are not biblical, but they talk about that particular verse and they tell you it's the law. You either accept the law of Christ, which is life, or you accept the law of Moses, which was temporal and put here only for a temporal purpose until Christ came. All right. Now, I'm just trying to get you. I'm trying to get you to see it. I love you guys. You have no idea how much I love you. And many, 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 many of the people that that were law keepers because I was very much still teaching from an orthodox way, a Zionistic way. You were here. You supported this ministry at one time. And, and many of you still listen, but you withdrew your support because I went against those things. But I, just like with Paul Bagley, I love you with all my heart, and I'm trying my best to get you to wake up to some things, okay? Let me, let's look at now. Now that you know that it's from those that would not receive the love of the truth, let's look at that then. Matthew chapter 23 but woe unto you, let me just make sure I'm in the right place. Okay. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. All right. This is why I'm trying to get you to understand something here. And I say this with... And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. With all due respect, Mike from around the world, this man, like I said, he says some amazing things. And I know some of you feel like different on that. That's okay. I don't listen to everything Mike says, so I don't know everything Mike says. But what little bit I have heard, the one thing I always seem to say to stand with Israel. 
Now, Mike may not believe all the doctrines that they have either. I, I don't know. Maybe he feels like standing with Israel because we know that God talks about the apple of his eye, etc., things like that. But you have to remember that represented Christ and his coming. All right. Whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. Whoever curses Israel will be cursed. Again, that's not talking about the Pharisees and Sadducees nor the scribes of, of that day. And here we have Jesus right here. All right. Now, if you want to say that the Pharisees and scribes of Jesus' day was the apple of God's eye, Jesus just says here, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are going to enter, that are entering to go in. Do you know one of the Egyptian documents I found, this very scripture is quoted. The only thing is, there's one other part in there that we don't have. It said that they had the keys to the, to, to the wisdom and knowledge to enter into heaven. And then it says, the next part here, that they hid, they hid those keys so that you could not enter in because they knew they weren't going in. Why? Because what Jesus says about them, they were serpents and vipers. They were a mingled seed. Remember, we taught this just recently about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Why is that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit an unpardonable sin? Because that is the redemption of the true seed of Almighty God's children. And when they go to condemning that right there, God doesn't pardon that sin. He was willing to pardon them for what they did to Jesus. He was even willing to pardon them for the sins that they were committing back then. That's why Jesus said, he says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not. Let's continue on. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, verse 14. For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more child of hell than yourselves. So my point is, what do you have to gain from studying underneath rabbis? that are trying to teach you about Jesus, saying that they know more about Jesus because, after all, they are Jewish. No, they don't. Do, do you remember where, where it says in the Scripture, and I think it's Paul that says, you need no man to teach you, for the Holy Spirit will teach you? Then why are you going to the very ones that Jesus says that they, that, that they have shut up the kingdom of heaven. For neither they go in yourselves, and neither suffer, you, suffer them that are entering to go in. Do you know why he says they, there's, that, that, that last sentence, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in? Because he knew the Christian is the one that's supposed to be entering into heaven. But because you get a hold of their doctrine, they stop you from entering in. Think about it real hard, okay? Revelation chapter 17. The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. Now remember what this is all about here, right? Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. This is where Ezra chapter 9, also kings, I believe it was, I shared with you the other day, they mingled the seed. They mixed the seed. And who did it? The chief rulers and the priest mingled their seed with the peoples of the lands. The Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Jebusites, and Canaanites. All of those people, when Israel went in to spy out the land, were Nephilim bloodlines from the book of Numbers chapter 13. I showed you that. And I'm going to show it to you one more time. There's a very precious brother that sent me a message. He's a little confused by it. And so I want to make sure that he understands as well, because I'm sure he'll be listening. 
and and real kind brother, very kind in his letter to me and everything. He felt like that all the uh, fallen angels, this only happened on the side of the flood or before, the other side of the flood and that that was over and that we never had the fallen angels again. It does not stop that from happening a second time. It's just those that did it then, which was about 200 fallen angels out of the how many thousands of them are there? We're imprisoned. Only about 200 were imprisoned. Still thousands more of them. All of them are fallen. Okay? Jude, in, in, in Jude's book, in his writing, let's just let's look at this real quick as well. We're going to compare the two together. And I, and I really want to do this for the sake of that one brother. He's so kind. He tells you to contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Wow, why is he telling you to contend to the faith that was once delivered unto the saints? That tells you because some people have gotten way off track. For there are certain men crept in unaware. They, people, you didn't even know how they got in there. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. That's serious. That's a very serious accusation right there who are before of old ordained to this condemnation. If someone is ordained to condemnation, that means they are pre-condemned. They are condemned even before the judgment gets here. And the only ones that were ever pre-condemned were the fallen angels that came and did what they did and their children, the Nephilim, were condemned. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into a lasciviousness denying the only Lord and God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But yet they're sitting in the church. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. He's trying to give you some hints here. The angels, angels which kept not their first estate. Take a little arrow and draw it up there to verse 4. But left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under the judgment of the great day. Okay? See, that's the ones that were before of old ordained to this condemnation. For there are men uh, that crept in unaware. In other words, these men are the same type of men from this time period. Now, remember what Ariel Sadok said over here, right? He talks about that very thing. That's what he's talking about. See, men gave rise to the fallen ones. They were not, as he says, there in Genesis. So don't go looking for that for, for the evidence of a six foot, about a ten foot tall guys. Ten foot tall guys were here long ago. All right, some might still be around. Ask some of the soldiers who fought in Afghanistan. Okay, well, we'll just stop. You just, if you remember that, he tells you they went to another dimension. They're inhabiting on another planet. Now, I don't know if that's really the case or not, but I guarantee you one thing, they're very active still in this world today. But even, watch what he says here, even Sodom and Gomorrah, that's during Abraham's time. And the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. By the way, that strange flesh is not homosexuality. Didn't know that, did you? There was another minister. I actually, when I found this, I don't remember if somebody sent me a video of this one minister, and I wish I could find that minister again that also taught on this subject. And he actually taught on it before I ever did. I just didn't know that he knew it. Um, I suspected it, but he had better proof the way he had looked it up in the languages there that it was uh, using the Hebrew word. And I know what he's talking about. Um... I can't quote that word off the top of my head, though. That strange flesh was alien. In other words, not of this world. And I'm doing some cross studies on some of these other ones as well. Um, because I don't think it's limited to what people think. I'll just leave it at that for right now. Likewise, also these dreamers, the word filthy is not there, dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. So I just want you to realize what you're dealing with, right? Then we go back to numbers. 
See, the land through which we have passed to spy out is a land that, that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in are great men of great stature. Huge. Now, there was one brother that sent me a, a message. Now, let me just correct this too. And they spread an evil report of the land which they had spied out under the children of Israel. And because of what he read in there, Okay, so the point being is he felt like, that, in other words, the, the report was a lie. No, the report's not a lie. It, the part that makes it evil was because it hindered the people's faith. That's why when Caleb and Joshua stood up and said, we are more than able to conquer them. They didn't disagree with what the report was. They just said, we were able to conquer. But here's the important part that I wanted to get to you, and this for the sake of the brother. All right. We have in English here, Nephilim. But we don't just have Nephilim in English, which the sons of Anak, who come of the Nephilim, he doesn't come of the Nephilim, he is a son of the Nephilim. Because in Hebrew it says Nephilim. Right here is the word Nephilim with the fe the yod. The yod is what gives it the e sound in there, Nephilim. Over here, though, it's Nephilim. Take the vowels out. The vowels were added uh, by rabbis many, many years later. To, so, and, and, and I kind of, you know, I appreciate in one way they did it for help for the pronunciation of words. But the words lose their pronunciation over time, period. But in this case here, if Moses spelled it one way here and another way here, then it can't have the same sound. Moses is not going to misspell words. He wasn't dyslexic. All right. He was smarter than the Egyptians were. So he's not dyslexic. Me, I would have misspelled it. If I was doing it, yeah, I could have misspelled it. So Enoch, who come of the Nephilim. In other words, he was a son of a fallen angel. That lets us know that there were more fallen angels and that they still were cohabitating with women even on this side of the flood. All right? Just so you're aware. Let's double back. Revelation now. So mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Then what do we have there? That is, as I've said to you before, uh, Ezra and chapter 9. And, and I did the one in Kings too, I think. But I don't, I don't remember it off the top of my head, so I can't run there yet to it. They did according to their abominations. See? Having not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to their abominations. We know what the abominations were, because even in the Dead Sea Scrolls, as I've pointed out to you many times, in fact, let me see if I can pull that up for you real quick. I'll try. Because that might help you as well. All right? And for those, it's superbook.org forward slash audiobook forward slash secret forward slash the underscore dead underscore seed underscore scrolls study underscore edition. Those of you that want to be able to look this up. Because I've had people ask me, where do, I, where do I get this? I'll try to remember to put the link in the description for you. Garcia Martinez, by the way, is an, is an amazing translator of the Dead Sea Scrolls. I have a great respect for his work. Um, I have cross-referenced him on many, many occasions. Um, let's see here. All right. Let's see if I can find it very fast for you here. Let me go backwards to this here. Um, Okay, a man of the seed of the holy ones there, let's see. By the way, this does have the Hebrew as well. I'm just popping through the English side of this. And uh, see if I can't find it for you real fast. 
Okay, let's see here. They unite with each other and defile the holy seed and also their own seed with fornications. All right, here it is right here. Uh, and, and by the way, um, let me just look at something here real quick for you. Okay, uh, here we go right here. I was looking for it. Now, this is where, all right, right here, their own seed with fornications. Uh, this is what I, this is why I disagree with, uh, um, was one of the many reasons why I disagree with uh, Tovia Singer, because here it is right here. Et zarim im. Okay. The word zarim is seeds plural. All right. And uh, when you're down here, here it is. Their own seed with fornications. But it's with their own seeds. They actually use the plural. Anyway, let's go back to what it says here, though. Uh, with vineyard with two species. He's actually quoting, and let me pick it up at the up here. Till the sun sets on the eighth day, let me just come down. It is written that he shall not let two species mate concerning clothing that no material are to be mixed. He will not sow his field or his vineyard with two species because they are holy. But the sons of Aaron, oh my gosh, uh, you, I want you to really see this. Let me make sure this is big enough for everybody to see. Let's back up. All right. And I've read this in Hebrew. It is translated correctly. All right. Let's start right here. Verse 5. Holiness as it is written. Holy is Israel. Okay. And concerning the pure animal, it is written that he shall not let two species mate. Okay, concerning clothing, that no materials are to be mixed. And he will not sow his field or his vineyard with two species. Because they are holy. But the sons of Aaron are the holiest of the holy. And you know that a part of the priest and of the people mingle and they unite with each other and defile the holy seed and also their own seed with fornications. And they file, how would it be defiled with fornications? He's quoting you to the scripture. Okay, and it's more important if you look at it in the species. It is written, he shall not let two species mate. So Aaron and his sons, the priests, the Levites, they literally fornicated with a species outside of human beings. Fallen angels are not human beings. These are not Heavenly beings, they are considered beasts. Yeah. They're of this. These, oh my God. Friend, I wish I could really tell you some things. There's some things that you need to know and you just don't seem to get. The serpent in the garden that was cursed was a beast, but he could talk, he could speak, he was super intelligent. Remember when Jesus con condemns the Pharisees and he puts the blood shed on them all the way back to Cain in the garden and the, uh, uh, killing Abel in the Garden of Eden? There's an offspring. There's a fornication. There's a mingling of a seed that takes place. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It's, she's called Mystery Babylon because it was in Babylon where this happened at. Have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations. Then we read, For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. 
And these people of the lands, according to what Joshua says over here in Numbers, or, you know, that Moses writes here in Numbers, that they had mingled themselves with Nephilim because those people of that land were Nephilim bloodlines. So when you're looking at the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I believe there's more than, let me just see if I can find the other one on this here as well. Let's just see here. Let me see what that on. I know there was more than one place where that spoke of. It's just sometimes hard to find these. And we'll just leave it for now. But you got to see it. I got I showed it to you. You saw it for yourself. Exactly what I was talking about. There it is right there. So Aaron, the holiest of holy, but they, they mingled their seed. And like I said, it's more than one place in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So in Revelation, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You know why John wonders with great admiration? It's his own people. I don't think he admired them. He, he was probably more in shock. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did you marvel? Maybe he did have an admiration. Maybe he was not recognizing what she really had done. I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her. Notice a beast carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and it is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. He was, is not, and he's going to send out of the bottomless pit. You know, Jesus said that Judas was the son of perdition as well. He was, he is not right now. Is he going to be the guy that comes back? I don't know. They that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. We know that's Israel. Rome does too, but so does Israel. Let's move down. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as of yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. They have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The word beast is always used here is because it's reptilian. Jesus says about the Pharisees that they were a seed or a generation of vipers. Descendants, in other words. They shall make war with the Lamb. The Lamb shall overcome them. And for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the war sitteth are peoples and multitudes of nations and tongues. That, that woman is going to reign over the kings of the earth. Remember, she's fixing to become the head of the new world order. Now, I want to share some other things with you going into Romans chapter 1. And there's a lot in here about that one. Let's just see here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek or the Gentile. So yes, the gospel first was to go to the Jews. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's serious. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. That's a modern day problem. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. They've gone back to a broken cistern that can hold no water. Instead of 
getting the water from the fountain of life, Jesus Christ. Now they get it from the fountain of the Pharisee. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And you better believe it, you're without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. You know, I know Paul's talking about those Jews that were believing in his day and what happened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They were like the dog to the vomit, returned right back to it. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and two birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. He went right back to the law. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. They changed the truth of God into a lie. He's identifying who did it. And they worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Remember that message I did not too long ago about the red heifer? And you evangelical pastors that are so sucked up into a heifer, you would rather follow a law than to follow Jesus Christ who liberated you from the law. Let me show something to you as well in Jeremiah. By the way, Romans is a parallel to Jeremiah chapter 8. Yea, the stork in heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the swallow and the crane observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the ordinance of the Lord. Are you serious? They do not know. Okay, and my people, they don't know. Jehovah, they don't know the judgment of God. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain hath wrought the vain pen of the scribes. Do you know another way that can be translated? That the lying pen of the scribe has turned it into a lie. In other words, remember how Jesus said, you teach for doctrines the precepts or the mitzvot. It uses the word in Hebrew, mitzvot. The commandments of man, you teach it as if it's the word of Almighty God. So yeah, they've corrupted the word of God. The wise men are ashamed, they're dismayed, taken, lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom, wisdom is in them? In other words, the prophets weren't good enough for you, Pharisees, scribes, and of course you pastors that want to learn from them. Therefore will I give their wives unto others. Oh my gosh, what do you know? Do you know that that's a prophecy that was fulfilled in Ezra 9? Because who was guilty? The priest, the Levites. And then God says here in Jeremiah 8, Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall possess them. For from the least even unto the greatest, everyone is greedy for gain. From the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Minavi, from the priest, Ve'ad kohin unto the priest. From the prophet, did I say priest, sorry. Minavi ve'ad kohin kula ose sheker. They don't do nothing but lie. 
not deal falsely. They lie. They work lies is what it says. Literally, they do lies. And they have healed the herd of the daughter of my people lightly, saying, peace, peace. Shalom, shalom. Leomor, they say. Leomor, shalom, shalom. Ve'en shalom. And there is not any peace. They shall put to shame because they are, have committed abomination. Yea, they are not to all ashamed. Neither know they how to blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. They shall stumble, saith the Lord. You read that in Jeremiah, and then you look at Romans, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this God, God for this cause God gave them up until vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do, to do those things which are not convenient. I'm going to tell you something, friends. And I know... And I'm not disagreeing with the fact of homosexuality on this case here, but I also believe that it dealt with fallen angels once again, the very thing that happened in Ezra, sleeping around with strange flesh. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, for envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whispers. They were doing it all. Every bit of it. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understand, understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And yet you want to go suck up to that very people that... Paul told you about you about them. Jesus told you about them. Ezra tells you what they did wrong. Moses told you what they did wrong. Jeremiah prophesied of what was going to happen to them, and you're still sucking right up to them. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Okay, that's important. He made an example unto those that should after should live ungodly. And he gives you two examples. What happened there in the days of Noah, which was fallen angel slept with the, with the women. It said about Sodom and Gomorrah, and that's where they took the strange flesh. That one I know for a fact is not homosexuality. That was they slept with strange flesh. They were sleeping with entities that were not human. And delivered just locks vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptions are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not a railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beast, there's your key, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that are understood not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. They that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime sports spots they are. And blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery. 
and they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Jude said, remember what Jude said over here? Ordained to this condemnation. What did Peter just say? Cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that are were clean escaped from from them who lived in error. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same as he who brought in bondage. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Boy, that reminds you of what Jesus talks about, the tares. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. No wonder, right? In closing, let's finish up here. I think, no, I think we've already done this. Yeah, speaking, by the way, he's given that mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. Maybe, I, okay, let's see. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. Don't forget, they blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. See? It'll be somebody out of that group there. That deadly wound came because of what happened to Jesus Christ. But now Christians are saying, oh, they weren't so guilty. And remember Mike talking about these entities that are going to come? That are, they say they're your brother. And I told you about them eight months prior. And I said they're going to tell you that the Jews were not as responsible as they claimed about the crucifixion. They're going to be able to produce for you a visual so you can see what really happened, or at least what their version really happened. Because they're trying to heal the deadly wound that Israel received for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. They worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And because of the word beast, you can't recognize who the beast is because you forgot what Jesus said about them. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Wow, that's interesting, half of seven years. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. It was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. By the way, the other thing that it said in that ancient document I was telling you about, where I said that they're going to take and they would put out the they'd poison the atmosphere, it also said that those little ones that are anointed to be able to tell you what the truth is, that they'll silence their voice. I'm Stephen Benoon. I hope somehow or another this somehow or another this helps you. Definitely sign up for our Patreon channel. Uh, it helps support the work we do. And if you would please consider supporting the work we do, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate online. It's always the fastest, easiest way to do that, or by mail. Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Thank you. Thank you for your love and your kindness. We appreciate it.